Within one America, Dr. Anthony Fauci is trusted and even immortalized. In the other America, though, he is tarnished and distrusted. Don't believe me? Take a look. The Fauci era is officially over. Right-wing TV has cast Dr. Anthony Fauci in the role of villain. Grouchy Fauci. Dr. Doom and Gloom, Dr. Flip-Flop Fauci. GOP lawmakers are echoing the attacks, showing the feedback loop in full effect. An activist scientist, an arm of the China, China's uh, propaganda machine. It's as if President Biden is a weak target of the anti-Democrat media. So they are assailing Fauci instead. Dr. Fauci has been more politician than physician. Fauci's voter registration shows he is affiliated with no party. He's worked for Democratic and Republican presidents, but now he's become a Republican boogeyman. His emails are a new excuse. Sean Hannity claiming that Fauci said one thing about the lab leak theory in public and another in private. These emails provide growing evidence. Fauci was warned and Fauci repeatedly, consciously downplayed it repeatedly. Routine emails portrayed as scandalous. Where have we seen this trick before? Ah, yes, Axios calling Fauci Trump's new Hillary Clinton. A Freedom of Information Act request revealed Fauci's emails from March and April 2020. And one email out of thousands showed that an executive with ties to China's Wuhan Institute of Virology thanked Fauci for saying science supports a natural origin of the virus. The origin is still being probed by Biden's administration, and Fauci is saying that bad faith actors are taking his words way out of context. No way. You can misconstrue it however you want. I said that I think the most likely origin is a jumping of species. I still do think it is at the same time as I'm keeping an open mind that it might be a lab leak. Keeping an open mind, what an original concept. These GOP lawmakers' minds are made up as they call for Fauci's resignation, thereby providing more content for GOP TV. Your job. I think he should be fired. He should go. Dr. Fauci has blood on his hands. But Fauci is not it's taking it all in silence. Fauci asserting that the hits against him are attacks on science. on science. Because all of the things that I have spoken about consistently from the very beginning have been fundamentally based on science. Sometimes those things were inconvenient truths for people, and there was pushback against me. And that, of course, garnered even more scorn. <laughs> he can speak for himself. He's always got a place on Nicole Wallace's show where she'll tell him what a great man he is. Really kind of a hero. So what is this all about? Are they trashing Fauci to rewrite history and redeem Donald Trump, excusing the former president's pandemic failures? Is it bigger than that? With me now is Amanda Carpenter, CNN commentator and political columnist for The Bulwark, and Oliver Darcy, our senior media reporter. Amanda, is this just creating content for the GOP media machine? What's going on? You know, some of these attacks are certainly overheated, but there is a vibrant and legitimate discussion about what happened during the pandemic. And Dr. Fauci is the face of the pandemic. And people have questions about the way things were closed down, vaccines, uh, even the lab leak theory. And I think it, it's good that Dr. Fauci has been a public messenger, but he has had some missteps that have made people on the right extremely upset, you know, sort That's of misleading true. people about masks early on because he wanted to preserve them for first responders, uh, misleading people about the number of people it would take for herd immunity. So there, there are questions. There should be some criticism. And when he comes before the camera, and sometimes he adopts this posture of, well, you're not criticizing me, you're criticizing science. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you are a public health official. He can answer some questions. And so I think when he takes that really defensive posture, that just invites all the more attacks. Well, criticism fair, but then Oliver, a headline saying arrest Fauci. That just shows how yeah. fair criticism goes to an unfair extreme place. Totally. And, and it's one thing to criticize someone and, and have a, a, a debate that's fair. It's another thing to say, like you just played, you know, he has blood on his hands. We should arrest him. We should prosecute him. We should throw him in jail and throw away the key. And that's sort of what you're seeing uh, really saturate right wing media these days. And it's, yeah, it's then you're really, really in like a fantasy land because that's never going to happen. So it's like a fantasy is the bigger picture, Oliver, that when Biden attacks don't stick, when attacks against Biden don't stick. The Fox world finds new targets because you wrote in our newsletter this week, uh, the critical race theory is an obsession of MAGA media, an obsession of Fox. It's talked about constantly in right wing TV. So is that an example of moving on to a new target? 
I think that's right. If you do watch Fox, if you pay attention to the right-wing media uh, landscape, you see them more, more likely looking at other targets. Uh, it's not so much Biden. It's it's going after critical race theory. It's going after Fauci. And, and look, like Amanda said, there are some uh, room for debate here. You know, it, it should be debated in, 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 in good faith. Um, and critical race theory could be one of the, uh, those aspects. But the problem is that you don't see that in these uh, uh, in right-wing media. It's really just about attacking, it's, it's demonizing, and, and it's uh, not conducive to a, to a good debate. Well, Amanda, what is going on with CRT? What is the, the, what is the core of this sudden, I've seen people call it a moral panic? Well, you know, listen, it's been very popular, I think, traditionally over the past few decades for uh, the conservatives and the right to mount opposition to school curriculum, right? Like we've had uproars over Common Core, and the school curriculum has changed a lot in recent years, not because of critical race theory, but in sort of adopting more inclusion when it comes to black history. I've seen this with my children. I, yeah. I have no, I do not think critical race theory is being taught in schools, but there's certainly more discussion of race. And so I think when regular people see this on TV, Fox blaring, this is this dangerous theory that's being adopted that teaches your children to hate others, they sort of translate it that way. And so it is getting some traction. We'll see how long it'll last. But you do see these cultural issues bubble up. I mean, first it's Dr. Seuss, it's uh, uh, Mr. Potato Head, it's critical race theory, it's transgender bathrooms. These things can be can have a flash in the pan quality. I mean, what I hear is a bunch of white people saying, don't talk about race, don't talk about race, it yeah. hurts. That's what I hear, but that's just me. I don't know, it's just me. Okay, talking about uh, narratives in right-wing media, Oliver, Vice President Kamala Harris, Paris. A narrative for many, many weeks on Fox was, why won't you go to the border? Why won't you have a press conference? This week, that narrative moved over to NBC, moved over into the rest of the media uh, during her trip to Mexico and Guatemala, didn't it? It did. It, and look, again, another area where, look, Kamala Harris did not perform well in that interview with Lester Holt. I think she did have some media mess steps this week, but the focus on Fox has really been to, again, demonize her. She doesn't care about you. She doesn't care about the Americans or on the border, and she's not even going to the border. And this is a, you know, every hour they're, they're, they're looking to really demonize her, not Biden, but her. And I think that's uh, the, the media story here is, you know, again, fair. it's fair to criticize her uh, on this thing, but it's really just saturated uh, right-wing media in a way that, uh, you know, it, Paces a lot of maybe too much emphasis, you know, right on this media messed up instead of some of the bigger issues. This brings me to a quote uh, from a source that I included in the new paperback version of my book, Hoax. Uh, it's at the very end, it's in a chapter about Biden, the beginning of the Biden years. Let's put it up on screen. This is what I was hearing from a liberal voice inside Fox. She said, The Biden team has no idea what they are up against. And I, I wonder, Amanda, how you'd react to that. Does that sound true? Is that fair? Because look, the Biden administration, they're polling well, Biden's approval rating is strong. Does the Biden team know what they're up against with these right-wing media narratives? Hey, listen, it's not just Fox. Through the Trump years, there's this huge glut of right-wing Trump focused media that built up that are in desperate need of content. This is why they latch onto the things like CRT, Kamala, whatever they can get to attack. And it, it's dominant. They push Fox further to the right. And it's just, it's, it's sort of interesting to watch. Now here's the most interesting story that I read this week in the media business world. CNBC reported that while Lachlan Murdoch, son of Rupert, has been running Fox, the other son, the brother, James Murdoch, has been donating even more money to Democratic candidates or Democratic causes than we knew. We're talking tens of millions of dollars. The headline there, $100 million from James Murdoch going to fund political causes. And by the way, there's even more spending than that. This is just what's been showing up in tax records. Oliver, it's impossible to hear this and not hear the music from Succession. The idea that <laughs> the liberal son trying to undermine the conservative brother and the conservative father. Is that what this story's about? It is, and he's using his own, the money that was made through this Fox machine to right. undo it. That's, that's what's even <laughs> right. the most remarkable part about it, right? He's using the Fox money to undo, or, or at least try to undo, uh, some right. of what Fox has uh, put into place, which is exactly. astounding. It's, and we're just going to see more and more of that from James Murdoch. All right, last headline to show, this is from Axios. This is about the father. This is about Rupert and what he's doing, lobbying Congress, because Rupert apparently wants Republicans to back these tech antitrust bills. He wants big tech taken down. But Oliver, isn't that just in his business interests? 
It is, and so anytime you see Fox attacking big tech, uh, again, not that there aren't legitimate criticisms of big tech, but it's really difficult to ignore that this does play into Rupert Murdoch's own business interests. He has a business interest in demonizing big tech and getting them broken up. And, and so when you see that on Fox or in the New York uh -huh. Post or the Wall Street Journal, it, it's difficult Think uh, to ignore Think about what's going that. on there. Yeah, but yeah, Amanda, at the same time, the stuff. there is a bipartisan consensus growing about big tech. I mean, it is remarkable when Rupert Murdoch is pushing for the same things that a lot of progressives are. Yeah, I mean, but the right and the left have completely different ideas as to what to do about it. And the right, you mm. so, sort of see that push for preferential treatment. Um, on the left, you just want to see a need to break it up completely. So while there is agreement on the problem, they're on completely different planets when it comes to the solution.